This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Lord, today we've gathered in your house to celebrate the birthday of your church, this most precious gift that you've given us, a church that exists not in one building or in one place, but throughout the world in the hearts of every person who turns to you, a church that can show us the way to heaven and the way to happiness. Lord, help us to give thanks to you for this gift with genuine gratitude. Open our eyes to see the goodness that you have given us. And Lord, may we take that goodness and embrace it and truly become the people of your church. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. Amen. Please rise, and you'll find in your handout for this morning our recitation for today, which is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 4. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up to everlasting life. Please be seated. When the Lord came to establish his new church, he didn't give us bricks and mortar to build with, and he didn't give us weapons to fight with, and he didn't give us signs in the heavens to overwhelm us and convince us. He gave us the truth. And his truth can seem like a very little thing, like it's so, no more than so much ink on a page even. It can seem like it's not powerful enough or dramatic enough to create something that will last in a world that isn't always very welcoming. After all, words are only words. But the word of the Lord is the word of our creator who made heaven and earth by saying, let it be. 
the power to create what he wills to create moves within his words like a stream of living waters. Now, streams are not unstoppable forces, but they show us a picture of inexhaustible, patient work. Over time, the constant movement of water will shape and reshape the earth beneath us. And it's the same with the Lord's truth. His touch is constant, sometimes gentle and sometimes stronger, but always stirring always welling up in us. He gives us something that will wash us, change us, fill us, and give us life. And he gives it to us steadily, patiently, constantly. It moves into us in an unceasing stream, and its movement is the movement of life itself, life without end. Of course, water can take many different forms. It can swell up and become an overwhelming flood. It, it can become dirty and dangerous to drink. The Lord's truth can be used to serve evil purposes, in which case it's like a flood of lies. Or it can be rejected and left unused, in which case what flows into us becomes stagnant. But the source is always the same. The water of life flows from the Lord, our God, who wills to make us live, who wills to make his church grow and become beautiful. Today, on New Church Day, we're going to hear stories from the Lord's word about his church, and we're going to see these stories portrayed in front of us. And these stories are filled with images of water. Water that sounds, water that whelms, water that cleanses, heals, and carries life. The waters of life represent to us the power of the Lord's truth. Water that floods represents the power of lives. We are here today to celebrate what the Lord is giving us. His vision, His truth, His testimony that He will overcome what rises against Him and will create something that lasts. A church where His word is understood. A church where His word lives and gives life to every human being. He will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. I, John, your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun, shining in its strength. 
And when I saw him, I had his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write the things which you have seen and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne of God and of the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, who are these arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then, being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, 
nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who had gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And I heard as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lord has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts, Come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely.
Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Lord, our Heavenly Father, you have given us the power to change, just as the earth is given power to be reformed by the water that flows from you. And Lord, you've given us the gift of freedom, freedom to choose how we receive. Lord, may we choose to take what you give us and live it and make it ours, become a part of your kingdom willingly and gladly. Lord, may we do the good work that you will for us to do. May your kingdom fill the earth even as it fills the heavens. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.